Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Polk Workbench. Well, after spending a bunch of time in SketchUp designing the awesome rolling toolbox, it's time to start building it. I have the materials, I have the tools, and I have the trailer. So everything I need here, the one dilemma is that I have been very organized with my tools and the way I use my tools over the last few decades with trailers and trucks, and currently I have neither. So I'll be working out of crates I'm using to temporarily store my tools. I haven't created a cut list or a plan to build this in detail. What I'm going to do is take my model, which is dimensioned, and I'm going to start with the biggest cabinets and work my way down to the smallest. I'll build all the boxes first, get them all installed in the trailer, and then I'll do the fill-in, cut the shelves, make the drawers, and all the dividers. So that way I'll be able to make adjustments. If I build the cabinet and I put it in there and I don't quite like how it fits, I'll be able to pull it back out, take the screws out, make some adjustments, and move on. If I build all the drawers and all the shelves and all the dividers, then I'm stuck with a bunch more material that I may not be able to reuse, or I may have to cut a bunch off and have a lot more waste. So that'll be the procedure. I'll take you along on this process and just kind of let you watch what I'm doing. And when the time is right, I'll discuss what I'm doing. So in the design, one of the, uh, one of the nice aspects is the right side of the trailer is two foot six. The left side of the trailer is 18 inches. So with a little bit of adjustment in the cut, um, as long as they're all cut exactly, obviously the same, I had to lose the blade width, but the fall off, one, one single cut and the large piece of the cut goes to the right for all the cases and the shelves and those things. And the fall off, the, the narrower fall off, goes to the left. So the efficiency there is obviously material. And with one cut, I have two pieces. So just the things to think about, you know, it's nice to have everything exactly, you know, two foot six, 18 inches and that kind of thing. But, you know, if you, as long as they're all uniform, you know, if you're, if you're shy, uh, a 16th or, or a 32nd, as long as they're all exactly the same size and work together, it's a good way to save time and material. You've been watching me break this plywood down very quickly. The tool I'm using to do this is the Festool track saw system. It's basically, it's a rail and a saw that's designed right on this rail. There's a groove on the bottom of the saw. It locks right in. You don't have to worry about side to side movement. And it's a plunge saw, so you plunge down and, and make your cut. The edge of the track and the way the saw is designed, I don't get any tear up, you know, because the circular saw cuts up and uh, a lot of, if you're, uh, if you're just cutting with a skill saw, you a lot of times get that upper tear and this helps uh, prevent that, minimize that. Additionally, I have another accessory. These are parallel guides. They fit on, also made by Festool and they just slide, there are no tools required. You just loosen them up with the knobs that are on them and they slide onto the underside of these tracks and then they have a stop that is movable. I can slide it in and out to get the cut 
that I want. The beauty of the system is that I take about five minutes to set up, uh, the first time to set up, to put these on the track and to get everything squared up. And then all I need to do from that point on is set uh, the size of the cut. And once I set a cut like this that I'm gonna make over and over, I don't have to think about the cut anymore. And there's no pulling out tape measure and trying to cut to a line. Um, I'm getting the accuracy of large shop machinery in a, an affordable system that's portable. So essentially, instead of a $10,000 sliding table saw, I, I have a, basically a, port, a portable sliding table saw that I can take with me to the job, do this kind of quality on the job, and when I'm in the shop, I can set up, and even if I've got a big cabinet job, I can, I can uh, blow through a lot of plywood uh, in a very short period of time and know that my cuts are all going to be identical. As long as I set it up the right dimension, that's going to be the cut over and over again. I did make one modification to the parallel guides. I put a, a, an aluminum tab on that keeps the uh, parallel guides from, from dropping below. They are designed only to butt up and I was having trouble. Uh, it was slowing me down to try to keep uh, the the parallel guides from kind of dropping below the plywood. And so there's another video on my channel and I showed this in detail. Um, and so it's a video about the parallel guides. You can, you can check that out if, if you're interested in that modification. <laughs> To do my plywood cross cuts, I use the cross cut jig that I made in the shop. And it is set up with a stop for, that goes on, rides up and down on this tape measure that will go out to six feet for repeatable cuts up to, up to six feet. I could make uh, this longer, all I'd have to do is extend it, um, but uh, the, most of the repeatable cuts that I do for cabinets I don't get into a whole lot of really long stuff. You know, cabinets are even uppers, tall uppers are 48, standard uppers are 30, and then lower bases are um, 30 also before you add in the toe kick. So what I do when I have a situation like this where I just need to cut two pieces that are beyond the length of the cut that I wanna, that I'm able to do using the stop, so what I do is just take the first one and put a mark on where I need the cut to be and it's automatically squared up because these uh, crosscut jigs are clamped to this bench which is square and there's a, a stop here so I have the plywood against that stop and, and this is uh, square or 90 degrees to that. So all I have to do is get on the one mark. I don't have to you know, mark both edges and then if I'm doing like this case, two cuts, I could just make the mark on both. But one of the other things that I do, especially if I have, you know, 10 or so that I, you know, some number and, I'm, and it's really critical that they match up, is I just put a block, I clamp a block on this end so that um, uh, I can just, you know, put the plywood on, just bump it to that end and make that cut. So this piece will be for my shelves. It'll make two of them, but I don't need the shelves or any dividers at this time. I want to uh, build all my boxes and assemble them and start putting them together in the trailer in case I find something that would be better, uh, maybe a size 
it's worth stopping and backing up, taking it apart, and uh, even if I do waste a little material, at least um, I won't have all the parts and pieces cut and then have to abandon a whole cabinet, maybe use the pieces for smaller stuff. So uh, instead of cutting the shelves, which uh, for efficiency sake and speed, I would do that. I would get all the pieces cut, but I'm gonna put this trailer together one at a time, so I'm not gonna be using uh, the best uh, production techniques like I would use if I were building uh, a custom closet for somebody or a set of kitchen cabinets. Uh, I would have a cut list made and make all the cuts and label them and then go to assembly and then go to install. In this case, this is highly custom and I wanna get it right. And so um, I'll cost myself a little time, but it will be worth it in the end because I'm gonna have this trailer for a long time. You'll see an active link in this video in which you can click on and go to the Paul Combs store and purchase the plans for any of these workbenches or the crosscut jig. Once you make the purchase, within a few minutes you'll get an email. At the bottom of the email, look for the link and the password and you can download them instantly and then print them off. If you're finding these videos interesting and helpful, please share them with others. Like them here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. Well, I think I'll call it a day. I'll see you in the shop in the morning. Thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.